Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In order to lead a healthy life, you need to do uh, certain uh, activities and follow uh, certain procedures. It's not only about following a diet. It's not only about exercising. Uh, it's a package that or a routine that we have to follow in order to be healthy and carry out our normal activities, our daily activities, without feeling tired or exhausted. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, we shall talk more about the initiative of A Bike for Every Citizens and also the importance of sports uh, to health. And we're very much <laughs> delighted to have with us our nutritionist, Dr. Nahla Bakri, to tell us more about it. Good morning to you, Dr. Nahla. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Dr. Nahla. Uh, Dr. Nahla, to start with, of course, uh, uh, the initiative which was launched by President Abdel Fattah al Sisi, A Bike for Every Citizen. How do you see the importance uh, of using a bike? as a mean of transportation. It's an amazing initiative um, that's going to uh, have triple benefits on society. First of all, you're, you're going to benefit your health. Mm. Uh, second of all, you're going to be benefit the environment, mm -hmm. which will, again, have a return on your health. And then you're going to benefit your budget. You're going to save time and money. And fuel. And fuel. Oh. My, you Let's know what? I was money. just going to tell you, I just <laughs> did a small analysis because I've been oh. biking. For a year and a half now, uh, instead of my car, I only take my car to travel mm. and I bike. And I'm saving as a single person between 3,000 to 5,000 pounds a month. Mm. So we're talking about uh, around 50,000 pounds a year or, or more because you save on doctors, you save on medicine, you save on gas, you save on tips, you save on taxis. Mm -hmm. Okay? Cool. There's a lot of savings and time and distress. So it's an amazing initiative if people mm. would only know and we really need a, a, you know, a, a national campaign to, mm. uh, to educate people about biking and the benefits of cycling. Yes. Mm. Uh, for talking about the campaign, Dr. Nahla, it's not only about raising the awareness of the public, but actually um, there are certain logistics that needs exactly. to be implemented in True. order to do that. Uh, myself, I, I have personally thought about it, but then I thought that it, it would be very dangerous to use a, a bike or a bicycle uh, along the cars because we don't have special bicycle lanes in our streets. So if we're talking about the initiative, I believe that it has to be or has to go hand in hand with certain steps and procedures. The government needs to um, lay an, a proper infrastructure for, for uh, for this to be done mm. and the people need to know more about the benefits what do Absolutely. you think of that oh i i you know i have an amazing plan in my head i did for my graduation project was build for building healthy environments mm. um to tie in the the biking lanes and the bike racks and the city bikes you know they're like a project called like city bikes that you mm. have an electrical bike and you know you you have an uh, um, some kind of uh, um, uh, card that you you know register and you can take it and leave it in another uh, parking spot you tie it in with the metro stations mm. with the bus stations so people can use their bike to the metro station park it there in a safe place take the metro come back and then go home so you're you're tying it with public transports and then I also, uh, my project tied it in with the, the parks, mm. with Azhar Park, you know, and I implemented my project here in, you know, from the Zamalik, the Gezira Island, all the way to Azhar Park as a tourist area. You can imagine if you turn, you know, you have the bike lanes, like you said, the bike parkings, uh, you have incentives, positive incentives, and also you, you make some streets only for pedestrians and bikers. Mm. So that's going to, uh, you know, encourage people to bike more. There's so much we can do. And, mm. you know, there's so much studies around the world of the health benefits. And, you know, we're going through an economical strife in Egypt. People are suffering and the government needs money. Oh, it will benefit both ends, mm. definitely. Yes. Mm. Uh, um, uh, Dr. Nahla, you yourself, even before this initiative, you have started uh, to use your own uh, your transportation. Can you tell us about your own experience regarding that? And... Um, uh, uh, how can you invite others to follow suit and what were the challenges for you? First of all, I have uh, certain health issues. I had an uh, operation in my back. Um, I, had, I have a serious problem with my right leg and I was not, after the operation, I was for 
forbidden to ri to ride bikes. Mm. So I haven't been riding bikes. And then I just decided because I live in Zamalek and the metro and all, everything is, you know, yes. I can go anywhere with my car. I feel distant. trapped in my car. I can't really park anywhere. Yes. <coughs> so I decided, you know, I'm just going to buy a bike. So I just did it. And I was so scared on my bike the very first week. I was, you know, feeling, you know, that I'm not in control. It just took me a week. Mm. I was very secure on my bike. And then after a couple of months, everybody in the streets knew me. So, I mean, we're talking here about you start with little steps. And, you know, even this with nutrition or behavior change, I like to call it the SSS plan. Small, mm. sustainable steps. Mm. Take, a, take the decision. Oh. Go very small, like take in your neighborhood or in very, very few streets. People in Egypt are always out there, so they will know you, yes. you know, and, and they're so sweet. So people will, will know, know, everybody knows, knows me around, and um, I feel so secure going around the island with my bike. I know exactly where to park it. Sometimes mm. I park it inside a building or, you know, by a lamp oh. pole or something. And also we have in Zamalek Association, we have aided in uh, doing some parking um, um, like uh, centers around mm. Zamalek too. Mm. So, you know, there's so much you can do, just start, just start. Mm. Yes, but do you think that we can take the experience of some countries, some European countries, I, I recall when I visited Amsterdam, for example, mm. the, the Netherlands, Everyone basically was using the, 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 the bike. Exactly. Germany regardless well. of the age, regardless of the social mm -hmm. standard, regardless of the destination. The chief take. of police goes to the police station with his bike. Everyone was. Everybody, the doctor, the professor, everybody. Even some ministers, they, they, they do that. You know, my family originally comes from Port Said, and Port Said used to be very heavy on biking. Mm. So I spent all my childhood on the bike. And I was very secure on the bike. Mm. So I went to Germany uh, in my teenage years, and my friend told me, let's bike to go to this cafe instead, you know, inside of the woods. And she showed me a very big map, and I had no clue how to read <laughs> maps. And she said, you see, it's a very small thing, you know, distance. Turned out to be this small distance was 50 kilometers. Yeah. And she lives on top of a hill. So oh. I had to go downhill in the forest. And, you know, coming back, all my muscles, you know, <laughs> just Camping. stopped working. <laughs> And, um, and I just found out, like, okay, the, the, the biking that I'm doing mm. in Egypt has <laughs> no uh, comparison to what they're doing in Germany. Mm. You know, so it's, you know, with biking, you can start slowly and you can really build stamina and muscles, which will benefit your health. Mm. You know, it will improve your lung functions, your heart functions. It will prevent cancer. It will help diabetes. And also, you will lose 5 to 10 kilos a year. Just maintaining the same diet if you mm. just start biking, five to ten kilos a year. How, uh, how long is the time of biking uh, that could actually be uh, of help to our health? Talking per about day. an hour a day. So mm. if somebody commutes half an hour in the morning, half an hour coming back, just an hour a day can do that, you know. And then really you're, you're supposed to exercise four and a half hours a week, half of which is heavy you know vigorous exercise not just walking y also. yeah and the mm -hmm. other half could be yoga leisure walking and 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 so on so I biking is considered a cardiovascular activity and uh, and so as you know it could go very leisurely if you're just strolling around and you can really take it seriously and sweat it out so it's beautiful and then you know um in, in Cairo, for instance, talking about Cairo and tying it with transports, you have a lot of Nile uh, taxis going yes. around. So if there are bike racks there, you can mm. take the bike to the Nile taxi, go somewhere and come back, take your bike mm. home. Same thing with the metros and the buses. Mm. You know, mm. if you can just tie all the transports together, the city will be cleaner, less car emissions. Mm. Less traffic. Less, less traffic, stress. Less, dis <laughs> less stress. You know, the stress, my stress level went so much down when I started biking. Mm. You know, and I started noticing beautiful things, beautiful people around, beautiful shops, a lot of things. Mm. I do everything on my bike. I mm. even shop. Now I have canvas bags. I have a basket. So nice. I do everything on it. I mean, I, in the beginning, I, I said, what am I going to do? Because I'm used to putting everything in the car. Yes, of course. And I, I, you know, carry heavy stuff. But you get used to it and you think of uh, alternatives. And now more and more I see more people and more even adults, not just children mm. or teenagers, adults. Mm on their bike. So Actually, the idea is gaining now. momentum, Dr. Mm. Nala, yes. and uh, many young people, I know personally, my cousin, he has been biking for years, and I was surprised to learn from him that so many uh, people 
um, young, uh, middle age, even people in their late 40s going with their uh, children and teenage uh, sons and daughters yes. uh, on long biking trips uh, right. in the very early hours of the morning. They start like it's 5 a.m. Beautiful. There is a lot of uh, biking communities. There are. They, yes. In Egypt, they, they started becoming well known, uh, right. expanding the community. They know yes. each other. And they travel from Cairo to Sukhna, for example, and sometimes mm. they take the bikes yes. and they go abroad to Europe and they, they do long distances with the bikes. The sky's the limit. I know mm. I have a client, she went all the way to Petra from mm. Cairo. Mm. She went on her bike That's from Cairo way. to Jordan. <laughs> mm. She's uh, the biker. Mm. I actually uh, have to mention, since you said about people initiative, I, I, you know, who started this in my family was my brother. He started mm. biking, I think, 10 years ago. In Egypt. In Ka yes, in Egypt. And he goes everywhere. He mm. goes to even, he, he lives in Doki and he goes to Heliopolis, to Maadi, everywhere. He even takes it all the way to Port Said. And, you know, and mm. uh, he has a bike here. He has a bike there. And, um, and just to mention, he was in a very severe car accident in, in India. And what saved him was the bike. What saved him was his bones. His, his mm. bone was bone. so dense that although he had multiple fractures even in the spine now alhamdulillah mm. he's back on his bike and he's perfectly normal and everybody you know said there's no way anybody could survive such a car accident mm. if he wasn't a biker mm -hmm. you know yes. so there's so much to benefit you know from uh, exercise mm -hmm. and especially that mode of transport yes uh, Dr. Nala, that would bring me to ask about the importance of exercising, not only using the bikes, but also the idea of exercising. Uh, how important is it for our health and how frequent we should be doing that to maintain a healthy lifestyle? As I said, the, the recommendation is a minimum of four and a half hours a week, half of which has to be vigorous. And if you're talking about less than 18 years old, 18 years old and less, it's double that. So uh, this is for adults, 18 years and above. And, um, and that means you're talking about half an hour a day for adults and an hour a day for children. Mm. And um, the benefits, the ex physical activity or what, you know, exercise is the only thing that does full detoxification mm. for your body, which means it's like, you know, talk about cars. When you want to really repair your motor, what do you do? You clean it, right? You cannot keep expecting a car to to function with you know blocked the system is blocked mm. right yes so it's the same thing with our bodies why don't we even you know we are more important than our yes, cars of course. right so it's the same concept that detoxification it's the most important process that your body does naturally you know every day but i mean the what we bombard our body with the wrong foods the wrong mm. <laughs> the wrong, wrong environment everything. wrong yes. everything so really the body doesn't get the benefit of full detoxification so this is the only way the physical activity mm. and to put this in hand that you have to have the four and a half hours a week two and two of them has to be vigorous mm. and then two and two and a half could be leisurely you could even do more walking mm. you could do so much i mean it doesn't have to be a gym doesn't have to be um, joining expensive programs at, not at all it's everywhere it's everywhere and then again going back to the bike owning mm. a bike you know or uh, that initiative a bike for every citizen if they provide the bike that's mm. gonna be so, so you just so go much to better. work uh, using your bike you just back from work using Perfect. your bike everything yes mm. yeah. yes i do but does this has to be accompanied with certain types of food that we have to eat uh, certain amounts of water that we have to consume daily of course, um, you know, when you start physical activity and when you start to cleanse your body, your body will tell you anyway, because really God put all the signals in. We just don't listen to it because they are blocked. OK, once you unblock all this uh, uh, stuff, you know, the signals that you drink more water. Of course, you're going to start drinking more water, mm -hmm. which is you're supposed to do anyways. And then uh, eat healthier. You're going to crave more uh, salads, crave more fruits, mm. you know, cra crave less junk, it, it's, it's going to come by default. I mean, we all know what we're supposed to do. But as I said, SSS, small sustainable steps. Once mm. you start with this small step, like biking or, or walking to, to, uh, to your work or something like that, everything else is going to fit into place. Mm -hmm. So can we say here that it's a cycle, Dr. Nahla, that we should be following? And how to start that? How to, to tell ourselves from 
tomorrow or from today, I will just uh, start to have a healthy uh, lifestyle by uh, exercising, by eating healthy. Uh, what are your tips here for a healthy lifestyle uh, uh, from what we eat, from our exercises, from what a comprehensive we A comprehensive one. Yes. one. The comprehensive uh, health plan, as mm -hmm. we said, is like you, you move more and you eat less and you drink more water, mm -hmm. mainly. And when, when we take it, move more, I already said four and a half hours, mm -hmm. uh, eat less, you cut at least a thousand calories of your diet per day, okay? It should be through having snacks or just not eating because I, I, I know some, some of my friends uh, know because we want to lose weight, they stop eating or they just eat breakfast and they don't eat all, all day. Mm -hmm. So what's the proper way? There are so many plans. There is mm -hmm. the intermittent fasting that you stop, you know, a certain hour. But that has to be done right because people, if they just decide to stop eating without following with the professional, they, you know, they put your, their bodies into starvation mode. Mm. So there is a proper way to do the fasting or the intermittent fasting. Mm. And then the, the, the best way actually is the snack diet, which you eat every three hours, small meals. So small frequent meals along the day, five to six meals, you know, then, you know, you're fine. And, um, and you drink three liters a day and you move more. But seriously... Everybody knows that. Yes. Most everybody knows that. Here, <laughs> I'm really, I really want to be applying. practical. I really want to be practical. Yes. If you want to implement, you want to apply this, start with the easiest step to you, okay? Which is, Which is usually the easiest step sometimes is drinking more water, mm. okay? Adding uh, more salads uh, to, to your table. Um, there's something called food economics. Hide or remove all the you know, the wrong things or the bad things for you from the house or hide it if you have to live with it, mm. hide it somewhere and bring up the, you know, the good stuff. Put a, a nice platter of fruit, fruit and some nuts always available mm. so they're handy. Yes, and that would bring me, Dr. Nahla, to ask about fruits because it was a conversation between us concerning the summer fruits, um, yes, uh, which Nahla is craving all the time. Uh, what are the proper fruit uh, to, to be eaten and not to uh, gain weight? Because some of the summer fruits are quite maybe... Uh, heavy in calories, heavy, yes. like mangoes. No, no. All fruits could be heavy in calories if you exceed the limit. Mm. And... Anything you eat in season is, is actually good for you because mm. the so seasonal mangoes, fruits, figs, uh, yes, grapes. you know mangoes, mangoes, why they come in the summer? Because they're very good to your skin. Mm. You can use them as a mask See? and, e you know, when you uh, ingest them, they help you, yeah. they hydrate you mm. and they grapes raise your immunity also, and they raise their immu your immunity. Mm. So mango seasonal for the summer for a reason, right? Mm. But that does not mean we eat 10 kilos of mangoes. We no, <laughs> mean just one a day. Just one a day. It's yeah. perfect. It's yeah. perfect. Okay, yeah. so there are recommendations Grapes, watermelon, for watermelon. They are all absolutely. rich. Absolutely, uh, mm. watermelon is like ninety percent water, water anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, cucumbers, melons, watermelons. Well, some are very. Is asking what about because the I, I, yesterday <laughs> we had this conversation. I was telling her I love summer very much because I love the summer vegetables and the summer fruits in particular True. more than winter. Winter, it's all about strawberry and, and oranges. Orange. But for me, summer is more rich in in fruits. I'm a fruit it is. type of person. Uh, I would have so much fun eating fruits like mangoes, grapes, uh, and, and uh, I'll watermelon. Give you, I'll give you the nuts. portion so that you yeah. put your uh, mind at rest. You need mm. to eat two, minimum two cups of fruit. Two is this, this big, okay? Two, three. In your case, you don't need to lose weight, so you can have three cups of fruits, any fruits, yeah. any yeah. fresh fruits. I, I, love the, fruits. I love the summer <laughs> fruits. <laughs> okay? But, but mm. every time you eat fruits, you have to... Um, eat with it some kind of breaks for the insulin and that means either nuts yes. or dairy or yogurt or ribe uh, you know with the fruits or with after? it no with it mm. with it after mm. before in the same meal yes. Yes. like let's say now i'm having a fruit after lunch that's fine because i already ate some protein at lunch but let's say i'm having fruit as a snack you can't have it alone that's not uh, that's not going to be good for your body it's uh, the blood sugar which was you know, raise the insulin levels, which what would you know, what you don't want. Mm. So what you do is with the fruit, you have some nuts or mm. some dairy, like you know, um, uh, milk or rib or or yogurt or some cheese if you like fruits and cheese. Mm. You know, yes, this mix. I like yes, nice. yes. <laughs> yes I, or, I used to eat or that fruits some and cheese peanut butter. Grapes. That was and peanut mm -hmm. butter, for instance, like uh, you know, uh, supplement this mix. Then you're ensured to have the better uh, absorption. 
and uh, you butter with fruits yes is it okay yeah yeah it's a it's a protein yeah mm. but not a lot again two yes, tablespoons I, max yes. it's all about portion control and the balance you know having a balanced diet oh mm. Okay, um, uh, I have uh, just one more question to you, Dr. Nahla. Is it important to have supplements and vitamins while uh, applying this comprehensive plan we're talking about? No. If you're going to eat three uh, uh, cups of vegetables at least a day and two or, uh, you know, two at least uh, cups of fruits a day, that's five all in all. Mm. Five colors, I talked about this so many times, yes, the five colors did. are red, white, mm. green, orange and purple. These are the colors of fruits and vegetables. Each color represents a certain vitamin mirror. And if you eat that every day, you do mm. not need any supplements at all unless you're deficient and your doctor prescribes it. Mm -hmm. Actually, having too many supplements is, is a load on your body. Mm. That on your body, uh, yeah, it, it has every um, supplement has something called a filler, mm. you know, to make it into a pill form. So, you know, that filler is a toxin to your body. Yes. Yes. So you're, you're not benefiting your body. It's better to eat your vitamins. Yes. Okay. Uh, finally, Dr. Nahla, before wrapping up, uh, it, um, we used to hear that it, it's not healthy to eat fruits or um, uh, that stuff right after having our meal. It's better to have um, an interval of two hours. Is that correct? Well, no. Yes and no. It, I, I don't believe so. You mm. can have a small fruit, you know, but people here in Egypt don't understand the concept of small. Mm. So that's why doctors just, you know, just tell them that. Just don't eat it and <laughs> just wait two hours. You know, they just, you know what mm. I mean? But in actuality, if you talk about research, no, you can have the fruit with the meal, no problem. But, but just before, after and two pieces. Yes, of yes exactly. You know, half a cup of fruits mm. per meal. That's fine. You will get your two cups a day. Mm. You know, but you just not mm. in one setting. You have a huge bowl of fruits, mm. the kind we see in the in the movies. You know, sitting mm. with the bowl of fruits and just eating and eating <laughs> nonstop. No. Yes, <laughs> Dr. Nahla Bakri, our nutritionist. Thank you very much for talking to us today about uh, uh, the initiative of a Bicycle for Every Citizen and applying a comprehensive plan for staying healthy. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Dr. Nahla. Always a pleasure to have you with us. And a uh, short break, our dear viewers, and after that, we'll be back to resume the segments of our show for today. So stay tuned. <laughs>